Welcome to Illinois in Focus. I'm Kevin Bessler. Coming up, we'll review the week's top stories about the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where Greg Bishop will provide an Illinois angle on the event, including Illinois Republicans saying public safety is much needed in the land of Lincoln. One of the latest emission standards announced by the Environmental Protection Agency, Mayor Brandon Johnson has refused to accept budget savings proposed by the Chicago Public School Administrators, and Illinois' Governor blasts former President Donald Trump's VP selection. Then the center squares Dan McCaleb and Brett Rowland will further discuss those stories and more. That's ahead with Illinois in Focus. I'm Kevin Bessler. They're simple, boring, never thought of until they're needed. They're windshield wipers. Only when Mary Anderson became annoyed that New York trolley drivers were stopping to wipe their windshield by hand, did anybody do something about it. By attaching a spring-loaded arm to a rubber blade, one woman made travel easier and safer. Look to innovate and pass it on from PassItOn.com. Welcome back to Illinois in Focus. I'm Kevin Bessler. Here are some of the top stories from the past week. Illinois Republicans are making the case for more public safety in the land of Lincoln while attending the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Greg Bishop reports. Aaron Delmar, an Illinois GOP committee member and delegate for Donald Trump, said from the convention hall that border security is a must. He also said liberal policies are not working. Um, that's just not a place where we're creating an environment that's safe for people to live. And those policies that Joe Biden has had for four years are resonating in Chicago. Republican Cook County State's Attorney candidate Bob Fioretti said if he's elected to the job, he'll hold people accountable, back the police, and support victims. He also questioned the end of cash bail statewide and said full discretion should be returned to judges. And not uh, allow our legislature to decide otherwise because we have thousands of cases that go through this system and they each need to be evaluated with a judicial mind to make the right determination. In Milwaukee, I'm Greg Bishop. Another Illinois industry is sounding off on the strict emission standards announced by the Environmental Protection Agency. The EPA rules state that 30% of heavy-duty vocational trucks would need to be zero emission by 2032. Industry officials lambasted the new standards as unreachable with current electric vehicle technology, including Mike Kacharski, co-owner of JKC Trucking in Chicago. Could it be possible that we have electric trucks soon? Sure, but we would need a miracle. Better technology. Let's see better, and i got to cut it. We're going to need like a super battery, something like out of the Terminator movie that we could charge up pretty quickly, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and it's going to last a while. The EPA calculated that new electrified trucks would save operators a total of $3.5 billion in fuel and other costs from 2027 to 2032, paying for themselves in two to four years. But Chakarsky says fully electrifying the U.S. trucking fleet would require a nearly $1 trillion infrastructure investment. Chicago Public Schools leadership is dealing with academic and budget deficits during a time of negotiations with the Chicago Teachers Union. Jim Telemonte has that story. CPS CEO Pedro Martinez paints a bright picture in weekly emails during the school year, touting the success of students, teachers, and staff. Illinois Policy Institute policy analyst Hannah Schmidt says CPS test scores remain low despite a slight uptick since the COVID-19 pandemic. There's maybe growth, but it's not significant enough to be celebrating um, and obviously a lot of ways to go when the majority of students still aren't meeting grade level standards. Schmidt says the teachers union is demanding more workers for fewer students. There's about 5,500 more staff employed in CPS over the last four years despite dwindling enrollment. Um, so a lot of things that don't quite add up and shows inefficiencies within the system. In Chicago, I'm Jim Talamonte. Governor J.B. Pritzker stepped up his criticism of former President Donald Trump and his newly selected running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vann. Trump unveiled his vice presidential choice just two days after surviving an assassination attempt in Pennsylvania. During an unrelated news conference Tuesday, Pritzker said Vance has extremist views. I think there are a whole lot of independents and Republicans who um, abhor what he stands for and won't vote for that ticket. When asked about the assassination attempt on Trump, the governor took the opportunity to attack the former president. Has been a, a congenital liar and is unfit for the office of president of the United States. Having said that, I am very pleased that he remains relatively unharmed. Vance himself faced criticism in the wake of the shooting for a post on X that suggested President Joe Biden was to blame for the violence. 
Those are the top stories of the week from Illinois. Find more online at thecentersquare.com. Coming up for Illinois in Focus, the Center Square's Dan McCaleb and Brett Rowan will further discuss the news. This is Illinois in Focus, a production of America's Talking Network. I'm Kevin Bessler. Tired of being in the dark about what happens day to day under the dome in Springfield? Do you want to be more informed in the decision-making process? If so, you need Blue Room Stream, a live and archived video streaming service that provides access to government meetings and events. With Blue Room Stream, you can watch elected officials in action, holding them accountable, and having your say on issues that matter most to you. Blue Room Stream is the perfect way to stay informed about Illinois state government and to be a more engaged citizen. Become a subscriber today at blueroomstream.com. Welcome back to Illinois in Focus, powered by the Center Square. I'm Dan McCaleb, Chief Content Officer at Franklin News Foundation, publisher of the Center Square Newswire service. The Center Square Associate Editor and Illinois in Focus co-host Greg Bishop has been in Milwaukee all week covering the Republican National Convention. The convention concluded Thursday night with former President Donald Trump accepting the official nomination as the Republican candidate for president just days after he survived an assassination attempt at a campaign rally last weekend in Pennsylvania. Greg, let's start with the atmosphere overall, particularly in light of the assassination attempt on Trump. Tell us about your experience. So clearly uh, showing up Monday uh, on on site in Milwaukee, uh, the first thing you noticed was the security uh, and, and the presence of uh, hundreds, if not thousands of law enforcement from a, a myriad of agencies, state police, county police, local police, uh, every mode of transportation from horse to you know, uh, armored vehicle and bicycle helicopters. The U.S. Coast Guard was flying overhead most of the time. We saw drones all over the place. The security perimeter uh, spanning multiple blocks uh, with with large iron gates up. And uh, I tell you, the 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 security was definitely on site uh, in, in force. Uh, I only was uh, encountered one protest on Monday, uh, and it was a, a protest group um, uh, critical of the situation between uh, Israel and uh, and Gaza. Uh, but that was the only the only major protest I saw. They walked through the streets outside of the the, the security perimeter. Uh, with police right there in tow, uh, no problems there. Uh, but when we get inside the perimeter, uh, it was a festival experience. Uh, it was something that, you know, everybody was smiling, happy, meeting new people, uh, connecting with old friends, uh, just the array of different types of media outlets there, uh, hosting programs from the location, interviewing uh, members of the Trump family uh, outside the convention hall, uh, discussing the issues, uh, but uh, talking with with delegates from from across the country, not just Illinois. Uh, there there was a sense of of, of unity within the Republican Party, uh, and that that was kind of a change of tone from what we saw during the primary. Uh, leading up to Trump securing that uh, that nomination this this year, uh, and even the years prior, uh, you had so-called never Trumpers within the Republican Party very critical of the president. All of that seemed to be completely pushed off to the side and uh, not relevant on the ground in Milwaukee. Um, and and it really does seem that the uh, attempted assassination on Trump's life Saturday in Pennsylvania uh, may have played a, a key role in bringing Republicans together uh, to no longer be critical of uh, the president's personality uh, and his bombast, uh, but some more just focusing on uh, the policy. So security was definitely very, very heavy uh, in Milwaukee here this week. Uh, and that gives us an indication of what it's going to be like in Chicago for the Democratic National Convention uh, starting August 19th, which the center square will be on the ground in Chicago to cover that as well. Uh, but uh, clearly, unity was a major theme uh, this week with the Republican Party for their national convention in Milwaukee. Greg, we'll talk about uh, the Chicago convention, a uh, Democratic convention in Chicago uh, later on um, uh, in this segment. Um, and we'll also talk about um, you interviewed a, a number of Illinois delegates and, and other uh, elected officials um, from Illinois. We'll talk about that in a minute. I just want to get your feel for the a little bit, dig a little bit more into the assassination uh, uh, attempt on President Trump, um, just in, in him appearing every single night 
uh, of, of the convention bandage on his ear. Um, the, the first night he came in his first public appearance since being shot just a couple of days prior rousing ovation. We had one of our colleagues last night covering uh, the speeches uh, uh, on the last night of the convention selling, saying it felt like a rock concert. In addition to the Illinois delegates, you talked about you talked to delegates from across the country uh, throughout the course of the week. How big did the assassination attempt factor in to everything that was going on at the convention? Yeah, I think uh, it really just solidified uh, the the party behind Trump. Uh, and uh, you know, as you mentioned, Trump came out Monday uh, like a rock star uh, or like a WWE star. Is it still the or WWF as, as some kind of big wrestling star? But I mean, he came out as the celebrity he is, uh, and and just the had a had a stoic nature about him. Uh, definitely seemed to be uh, more reserved and focused uh, as as he walked out on the on the on the uh, the floor uh, to uh, to raucous applause. Uh, but you know, Monday it seemed to catch some of us off guard. They actually, the delegates, went ahead and got out all of the votes. You know, the the nomination votes and had all the states announce their votes going to Trump. Uh, and then you had also uh, the early uh, announcement of J.D. Vance being the vice presidential uh, candidate and uh, all the votes going there as well. Uh, so, you know, the news was huge on Monday, uh, just with Trump making that first appearance, the vice presidential pick being announced uh, and secured with all the delegate votes. Uh, but the assassination attempt Saturday uh, really, really has, you know, caused uh, Republicans to not just unify behind Trump, but also to, I think, uh, unify behind getting answers uh, because of what happened with the security lapses uh, in Pennsylvania with the uh, the Secret Service. Dan, I don't know if you saw the video that uh, Marsha Blackburn um, uh, put out, uh, a congresswoman from Kentucky, but uh, she and another congressman uh, confronted Kimberly Cheadle, the director of the Secret Service. Uh, on the convention grounds uh, and we're asking questions of her. Uh, one congressman even uh, saying that uh, Cheadle had hung up on her uh, and wasn't providing any answers. Uh, so uh, that video is, is rather fascinating because Cheadle said that now is not the appropriate place to answer those questions. She started walking away. Congress people were literally jogging down the hallway, chasing her down and she would not answer any questions. They were saying that it's a shame that she should step down. Uh, then she ducked behind a door with security uh, and even one uh, one official there uh, trying to get answers saying that, uh, you know, she seems to have more security than the president. Uh, so uh, clearly there's a lot of frustration, uh, not just, you know, the unity behind Trump, the unity of the, the Republican Party on display at the convention. But also the frustration of the lack of security uh, and the failures that happened Saturday. Uh, but what was also fascinating, Dan, is, you know, Trump came out Monday with the bandage on his ear. And then you had uh, the following days, uh, other delegates wearing a a faux bandage on their ear. And support uh, and the even president, the, I take it, the former president, I take it. Yeah. As, as a way of being, you know, solidarity with the president uh, and even the Illinois delegation, uh, they had breakfasts each morning of the convention. Uh, and on uh, Thursday, they were handing out what looked like American flag business cards that people were essentially putting on their ears uh, in, wow. in you know, solidarity with with the president. Uh, so the, the assassination attempt, um, obviously uh, horrific uh, and the loss of life of the uh, the 50 year old firefighter, firefighter uh, father and husband. But the the, the I guess uh, joy of the president surviving. Right. And even the, the president uh, last night. Uh, in his official uh, acceptance speech, talking about how he shouldn't be there. Uh, there was the grace of God, uh, a miracle uh, by millimeters, as uh, somebody else said. Uh, but uh, the, the crowd chanting, uh, chanting that uh, when he said, I shouldn't be here, uh, they chanted, uh, yes, you should. You should be here. Uh, and, and, and showing that uh, that uh, affection towards the, uh, the former president. Uh, so clearly, you know, the week before the assassination attempt, uh, everything was about Biden. Uh, and whether or not he's going to be in the race and the calls from even Illinois Democrats saying he needs to step down, uh, not the party, but several uh, Illinois Congress people saying that the president needs to step down. That dominated the news. But Saturday, things changed drastically uh, with the uh, the former president surviving an assassination attempt uh, and uh, the, the, the storyline heading into the convention. 
it not being delayed, it not being canceled. And they went on with a, um, a pretty powerful uh, convention, Dan. Uh, and uh, uh, it was really like, uh, as you said, a, a rock concert, uh, a, a large festival uh, where everybody was on the same page uh, and uh, ready to, to head into November. Let's uh, segue into the Illinois uh, news that came out of the uh, the, con- the convention. Uh, the, the Illinois Republican delegation held um, se- semi news conferences, uh, gaggles, I guess is what you call it, every morning. Um, you were there uh, uh, covering it, videotaping it. Um, that video and, and Greg's stories, uh, uh, listeners can can go back and look at the center square dot com. What are what's, what are your some some of your takeaways from those from those gaggles? So uh, you know, the the uh, various speakers that were there uh, from the Illinois delegation uh, talking about you know their priorities moving forward, uh, the focus on uh, election integrity uh, was was crucial. Uh, the focus on the economy. Um, I had asked about population decline uh, and how they uh, they get that message out to reverse policies in the state of Illinois. Um, but uh, what was really interesting was Wednesday. Uh, you know, the Republicans held a news conference. Conference, but then uh, immediately afterwards, Cook County Republican state's attorney uh, candidate Bob Fioretti held his own news conference, and he was surrounded by several leaders of the black community in Chicago. Uh, here in Milwaukee, they had come as guests for the convention, uh, and they, uh, they they shared their thoughts, saying that Democrats um, aren't helping the black community, uh, saying that uh, the black community needs to ditch Democrats. Uh, and, and, and really, uh, an interesting message that, uh, that I think is, is resonating more and more, uh, cause it's not just about the crime. It's not just about the economics. It's about the non-citizen migrants that, uh, the black community, especially in Chicago and Cook County feels that, uh, they're being, uh, looked over, uh, as, as the non-citizen migrants get more resources from taxpayers, uh, than the black community. Uh, so whether or not that actually translates into, you know, Chicago, uh, quote unquote, going red. Um, obviously, we'll have to wait until November to see if that's the case. But uh, clearly, there's there seems to be a movement of um, the, the party. And this is another major theme of the Republican National Convention, uh, not just uh, across the country, but even in Illinois, uh, building more diverse coalitions, uh, going after not just minority communities, but uh, going after independent voters and undecided voters and bringing them into the party. Uh, so while unity was a major theme, Big Tent was also a major theme of the Republican National Convention uh, and the Illinois delegation uh, discussing this to a degree, especially uh, in welcoming some of those uh, black leaders to discuss how they feel that they've been uh, pushed to the side uh, by Democrats after 60 years. Uh, of, of, of Democrats uh, courting black voters. Uh, but the, the, the black leaders also said that Republicans need to do more uh, to get into the black communities, uh, to actually reach out and uh, extend their hand and to discuss the policies that they feel uh, could help their communities. Uh, so uh, a lot of a lot of conversations on these lines, I imagine, are going to be happening in the, in the weeks and months ahead as we get closer to the November election. Greg, you also had a number of one-on-one interviews with delegates and others from from Illinois, uh, Congressman LaHood, former state senator uh, and governor candidate, Republican uh, candidate for governor, Darren Bailey, others. Any Anything stand out from those one-on-one interviews that you had? Yeah, I think the um, the reaction to the attempted assassination uh, last week, uh, pretty, uh, well, uh, let's just say, uh, Staggering, right? I mean, you had you had Bailey say that he was he was upset. Uh, he was he was mad uh, when the assassination attempt happened, uh, but then that quickly turned to joy because Trump survived. Uh, and uh, the resolve that that built in uh, the Republicans to, to stand behind Trump. Uh, but then again, as we mentioned earlier, um, the frustration there was, uh, you know, uh, Congressman Darren LaHood said that uh, Kimberly Cheadle needs to step down immediately. Uh, and while we knew that there was a uh, House Oversight Committee uh, planned to open as early as Monday, Dan, uh, to continue an investigation of what happened, the security lapses there. Uh, we we heard from uh, Congressman LaHood that uh, he's on the Intelligence Committee, uh, and he was given you know classified briefings about what happened. Uh, he said it's an embarrassment. He said that uh, not only is it an embarrassment for this country, uh, it sends a horrible message to foreign adversaries 
and uh, he called for Cheadle to step down immediately. But he also shared with us that uh, there there's an effort to start a a, a task force, uh, a bipartisan task force with subpoena power to further investigate and get answers as to what happened with uh, the Secret Service uh, on Saturday when uh, when former President Donald Trump survived that assassination attempt. Uh, but, uh, you know, talking with the the delegates from Illinois and delegates from across the country, we talked with uh, delegates from Washington State. We talked with delegates from Pennsylvania. Uh, we talked with delegates from uh, North Carolina. Uh, and, and again, uh, hearing what their main focus has been, uh, especially in those specific states uh, and how the top of the ballot uh, could impact down ballot races and how uh, the top of the ballot uh, could also bring in independents and uh, undecideds, uh, especially after what happened last week in Pennsylvania uh, and all the discord that there is within the Democratic Party over whether or not Joe Biden's going to be the nominee. You know, this time next week, Dan, we could be having a totally different conversation heading into the Democratic National Convention uh, as, uh, you know, some of the headlines I'm sure you're seeing, uh, as well as what I'm seeing, is that uh, Biden could be, you know, pushed to the side, and what that means for uh, the the uh, the the delegates in uh, in in Chicago come August nineteenth. Yeah, we're in a tornado of a rapidly changing and evolving news cycle, uh, and that's something else. Even talking with uh, not just delegates but other members of the media. We had uh, a media partner that we hooked up with to, uh, you know, get some of these uh, these sit down interviews. Uh, and I asked uh, I asked the, the gentleman uh, behind the camera who is in Washington, D.C. all the time watching. Polly, he's been on the scene, you know, watching these uh, national political conversations every four years for president. And I asked him, I said, have you ever seen anything like this? And it, it, he just said, no, this is this is all brand new. This is uh uh, never uh, have I has he seen the, the the temperature as it is now, uh, at least when it comes to the news cycle rapidly evolving as it has. Uh, I think we're in for an interesting ride, Dan. And yeah. uh, we'll be tracking it all at thecentersquare.com. Yeah, let's let's talk about that, um, Greg. You know, we've described the Republican National Convention as you know a rock concert of sorts. Um, all Republicans rallying uh, around the former president after the assassination attempt. You know, even, and I would even venture to say uh, it's it's almost no longer the Republican Party. Uh, it's it's the Trump Party, yeah. right? Because uh, the the just the way that uh, this convention compared to previous Republican conventions, of course, they didn't have one in 2020. But this Republican National Convention, uh, it, it's not your dad's Republican Party, right? Uh, it's not uh, buttoned down anymore. They had Kid Rock come out last <laughs> night for crying out loud. And Hulk Dan. Hogan. We mentioned WWE Hulk earlier. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you know, the, the, the Democratic National Convention. It's going to have a completely different feel. It's, I mean, it's, it, uh, there is no excitement for, for President Joe Biden, who, as we speak now, we, we record this episode of Illinois in Focus, is still um, the presumptive nominee of the party. But as you've said, growing calls for him to step aside um, and even some media reports saying he probably he might step aside this weekend. That would open up the Democratic National Convention in just a few, a few weeks to perhaps chaos. Yeah, and and tra- tracking that on the ground in Chicago uh, is going to be a uh, an overtime job uh, because there's going to be a lot of backroom deals. Uh, clearly, I think that uh, the RNC is going to translate uh, into the DNC when it comes to the security apparatus. Greg, great coverage this week. Appreciate all you do, and thank you for joining us. Listeners can keep up with all of Greg's coverage from the RNC at thecentersquare.com. 